guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, my goal is at the end of this video is to show you guys the entrepreneur's path basically because the person that I'm going to be interviewing today has gone through a lot to get to where he is right now and he's actually going to be one of our first foreign interviewees because I'm always interviewing Filipinos here and basically he's the first also in-person interviewee because I just literally interviewed him right here beside me. So you guys are going to be really learning a lot of things today. So make sure to stick until the end of this video for a lot of really golden nuggets from my boss. And if this is your guys' first time on my channel, my name is Leanne Laila Kaba. I am the virtual ate. I've been working from home since I was 15 years old and I post videos here on my channel every Sunday and Thursday on how to work from home. So if this is something that you guys are interested in, make sure to hit the subscribe button right there so you don't miss any of my videos. So our interviewee today is Tom Tate. He's actually from the US. He started actually doing businesses since he was 12 years old and doing a lot of crazy things as he will explain later just jumping the gun and getting right into it. So you guys again will get a lot of the shortcuts that he has found himself as an entrepreneur and also someone who's been working from home before there was such a thing as working from home. Okay guys so we have a super special guest today because he's actually going to be our first foreigner here on our channel which is super interesting plus he's been working from home since before I was born right so without further ado guys please help me welcome my boss Tom Tate hey Tom mm -hmm. hello how are you good so unlike our usual interviews here Tom's actually right beside me he actually has a different camera setup but we're going to be of course talking directly to you guys and sometimes we'll just maybe look at each other so just kind of a heads up so Tom tell me more about how work from home was or how you get started like having your business working from home basically well, back a long time ago, I had other types of businesses, had a crash, and actually it was in coffee shops where I worked. And I discovered that being in a coffee shop, I thought differently, and I focused on working on the internet and stuff like that. And so actually, my first online business was mostly built in coffee shops, and it was built by just sitting there with my coffee. So how was that? Because I know you did like a lot of different businesses. You did mail order, you did online businesses before it was even a thing, selling digital products before it was even a thing. Right. How did you get into those different kinds of businesses? or like how do you know like oh this is the next thing that I want to do well originally I found a book that said how to make a fortune selling a product you can get for free and the idea was that you could sell information and that just seemed magical to me it's like holy crap information and you can sell it and people pay for it and you can actually provide a lot of value that way so I got into mail order and in that book one of the things it taught was that you would look at old ads that were still running and those were successful and that's how you could learn copywriting because copywriting is actually probably your most valuable skill because if you can get somebody to take an action online then you can make money in a lot of different ways and mm -hmm. so that skill set from mail order carried over into the internet when I realized wow the internet's growing and stuff and then move the business over. So I'm curious about that because we've had different copywriters here and like I've talked about how copywriting is if you're going to start out as a writer is probably the, one of the best ways you can start into but before the internet before that how would you sell your products then without the internet? Before the internet there was you know basically mail order and my specialty was putting very small ads in the backs of magazines and then people would write and there's kind of a rule that back in the day that you're only supposed to offer like for somebody to send a self-addressed envelope for free information and then you sell them later. I actually violated that rule and had them send <laughs> me money directly, but it worked out well for me. And then from there, I would sell them more products because that ad is too small to make very much money on because you can't get enough information into your audience's mind. Mm -hmm. It's different than the internet. It's almost like a title for an internet. Like just a video. Yeah, like just yeah. an ad title. Yeah. Whereas a video has tons more information. But you get them to take that first step and then afterwards you can sell them more and more. So that was how I did it. Cool. Yeah. So with that, like now... Can you describe a little bit about how your life is now working from home now that we do have the internet? How does like like your day-to-day -day look like right now? My day-to-day -day kind of went from that to working online to hiring employees online and I hired a lot of employees online and then it kind of has progressed to where now I mostly goof off and I <laughs> consult and I just help different people on my teams when they have different challenges or they want to learn something new or grow. So mostly, honestly, my life is just like this I'm kind of a I'm kind of a bum unless I want to focus on doing a new project so this is definitely something that even though like your first foreigner that in any Filipino can start dreaming of going into that you started with a lot of the physical business and then digital business and you actually did a lot of consulting for different business people oh yeah and then eventually starting like the company that we have now we're working from home we're all remote we haven't seen our employees in six months right. so it, it's definitely something that they can aspire to right oh yeah in fact a lot of our employees since uh, Leanne's been around and even before Leanne 
ended up you know leaving and starting their own businesses which was with what they learned from us um, and a lot of those businesses are quite successful and we're still friends with them and stuff like that so once you gain the skills you can just make money kind of whenever you want like as a crazy example let's say I lost everything right just the copywriting skill all I would do is I would write to different websites and I would say I'll redo your copy on your website if you'll give me a check if it wins people it's free money for them so they'll always say yes and mm -hmm. I had a friend who did restart himself that way and you can charge a lot like five thousand wow. dollars but they don't give you the money unless it wins that skill once you have that in your head that copywriting skill making money becomes easy because you can just find a lot of different places to put that skill. So that's very interesting because that connects to my next question would have been if you're talking to 15 year old Tom what would you tell him about if he wanted to either start a business or he wanted to start working from home what would be a good piece of advice that you would give him? I would tell 15 year old Tom to get a mentor <laughs> and to <laughs> get a job in a field focused on what you learn. 15 year old Tom just swung for the fences and crashed and started <laughs> over and over again and had many huge failures and was willing to just jump in the fire and get burned over and over. So I would tell 15 year old Tom you would learn a lot faster if you had not just books from the library and not just courses, but if you went and worked with mentors. And so 15 year old Tom, my advice to him would be give a lot of value to whoever you're working with, but in the back of your mind, don't care about the money ever. Mm -hmm. How much they pay you means nothing. What you learn is what will pay off in much greater income in the future. So give a lot of value in exchange for the learning and just earn just enough to live until your skills ramp up. And sure. so that was what I would tell 15 year old Tom and that's whether mail order or digital and that's also what I would tell 15 year old anybody now. Especially <laughs> now because you have a lot more opportunity because your mentor doesn't have to be in the same location True. as you. And that's funny because you've been my mentor. It's the reason why I got to be able to grow up so fast and become CEO at 20 because I had you as a mentor and a boss. So you were way smarter than me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got lucky. I got lucky that you know I randomly applied for a book editor job and right. I got you guys. So definitely having a mentor is such a powerful thing because like I had to learn from his mistakes, so I didn't have to do them myself. So it's definitely <laughs> something that's super good. But if let's say someone has you know they have a business idea right now and they want to get Get started with it but they're struggling to get it out like that perfection is or wanting to just keep it no 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 it's not ready yet it's not ready yet what would be an advice for that kind of person if you have a business idea then everything depends on the type of idea so I mean this advice may be really bad or really good but for most ideas your best bet is there are people who produce ideas like bam 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 so there's millions of ideas out there and there's other people who don't produce them very well but because there's so many ideas, what has value is an idea that's been evolved and worked on. And we're afraid that we create this idea and in our mind, it's like, oh, it's perfect. It's gonna be beautiful. Somebody's gonna steal it. No, it's probably gonna fail, to be totally honest. <laughs> Most of them do, which is fine. Because you get it out in the world and you test it. And think about like evolution, like Darwin's evolution. You know, like a bug has like a million babies and like two of those live. Well, that's mm -hmm. okay to have a lot of ideas. But you put your idea out there, you get somebody else to look at it, you get interaction with it, you test it. You do what's called a MVP or minimum viable product, but you go to the smallest point you can to test whether or not it'll work. Making one dollar, getting one view, you make it very small and then you find out if the world market is what you think. And the thing is, if it is what you think, great, but it probably won't be, but that's okay because you'll just adjust. Your idea doesn't have to end up the way it starts out and it'll adjust. Matter of fact, uh, Twitter, their business was a completely different model and that was just a side thing that took off. That's a very common thing and the experience you get by getting it out in the world is a hundred times more valuable than anything you think of or any study. True, true. And it's definitely something that a lot of people think that they have to have you know, huge capital right away, but I'm like, no, test it out first if people actually want it. Yeah. So doing an MVP, doing just a small test to see if it's actually something that the world actually wants is so important. It, it is something that easy to get over the perfectionism. I'm like, no, test it out, see if people want it, and then you know we can tweak it, we can package it or whatever you want, and then push it out because we know that people actually want it. Oh yeah, that's yeah. a huge thing. People think they have to have money to do things, and that's totally not true. You can start <laughs> anything for zero, and if it's a good enough idea and you'd have to have money, then you can get an investor. But as soon as you go down that trap, you think, oh, it won't work without it. You can test anything. In fact, in mail order, you think, oh, it would be impossible. I'd have to pay for my ads, right? I actually searched magazines, found one that was growing, and they wanted to have more advertising in it. So for three months, they gave uh, one free ad, and that's Ooh. how I started it, just completely for free. And now with the internet, I mean, you can put stuff everywhere. You can upload a video. There's zero reason to spend any money. I mean, if you have money, then it's more efficient to spend it faster. But if you don't have money, you have your time and you can test it with your time and you don't have to spend a penny. Don't ever let the lack of money 
block you oh. because that's just a huge mental block that everybody has and it's totally not true. I love that we went over that because I know that for a lot of freelancers, even people who are starting to work from home, they think that they need the fanciest laptop, they need the best ergonomic chairs or whatever. But in reality, you can just start with your phone. You can start with finding copywriting jobs even on your phone with Google Docs and so many other tools out there that you can just get started just by writing a whole article on your phone. So you don't need the best equipment or just capital to get anything started. So. Yeah. yeah, one of my uh, employees long before we worked with Leanne actually wrote entire books for us and she wrote them on her phone. Um, she was an Irish woman and she had a job on a sailboat and so she actually wrote whole books for us that we then sold just on her phone and that was how she started growing in her internet marketing. Didn't have a computer or anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So definitely don't let not having the quote unquote right tool really stop you. I've said this before, you know, you're only as good as your tools. You're only as good as, you know, you could have the best laptop, you can have the best equipment, but if you have no idea how to use it, then it's kind of useless. So well, tools are just a multiplier. Yeah. And if you multiply times zero, you still get zero. But I mean, a tool will make whatever you do faster and easier, but when you don't have it, you don't have it. That's okay. So yeah, the tools are a great multiplier and that's all they are. So last question, this is usually my favorite question, is what currently right now, you know, you've gone through what most people don't even think that entrepreneurs go through. You had multiple businesses, you've had jobs, you've quit jobs also once your businesses take off. Yeah, yeah. What is currently for now, what is your big hairy audacious goal? What is something that you're working towards? My big hairy audacious goal is to teach the world how to think. And I know it sounds kind of crazy, but like, if you take somebody who's never had a laptop before and you hand them a laptop and they open it up and they see YouTube, they're gonna have nothing but crap on that first page. <laughs> nothing like what Leanne is producing that will teach you and help you to grow. And because of that, people are ignorant and they don't know. As a matter of fact, this great big uh, COVID panic thing, there's so much like fear porn and fake news and exaggeration because people don't think. I want to help adjust things out in the world to where when a person first gets their first smartphone or their first computer, some of the information on there gives them the chance to grow and have a better life. And I want to really teach the world how to think for themselves. Like not how to think how I want them to or anybody else. I just want more people in the world to think for themselves. And so we have a variety of projects that go that direction, but that's pretty much the big hairy goal. Cool, cool. And I love that because it is true. The first time you open YouTube, if you have no history at all, it'll show up you like the weirdest things. It's totally useless. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like no, there's nothing there that makes you better. And yet there's thousands of channels that you can learn science, mm -hmm. you can learn programming, you can learn business, Literally all of that's anything. available. But if you, you know, open it up, all it is is some sports and some music and something stupid Trending. and something funny. And it's just like, it's totally useless. Yeah. And once you get sucked into that, that makes your life go downhill instead of uphill. So yeah, thank you so much for being here, for talking to my audience, for being my first, again, foreigner interviewee, an in-person interviewee also. This is not obviously done through Zoom. You guys can see my hand right there. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Tom, for being Thank here. you. Thank it was you. fun. Yeah. Bye. Now, if you guys want to learn more about Tom, he's actually not active in any of his social media. So I'm just going to leave a couple of links of his below. And if you guys got any value from this, make sure to hit that thumbs up button right there to help support this channel. If you found any really good quotes from Tom, make sure to comment them below. And if you still haven't, make sure to hit the subscribe button right there so you don't miss any of my videos every Sunday and Thursday. And you guys can check out these other two videos right here to get more interviews from really amazing people who have started working from home. Now, I hope you guys have an awesome day and remember that small steps matters and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!